Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. This is Omar Hanser, I'm an Associate Principal with ZS. I lead our customer-centric marketing analytics efforts in North America, and I work with a number of biopharma organizations in multi-channel marketing domain, leveraging advanced analytics. We have an innovative and exciting topic to cover today. We'll be focusing on orchestrating HCP engagement using artificial intelligence and automation. Before we turn our attention to pharma, let's take a quick look at our digital world today. It's indeed getting deeply personal. Amazon is able to effectively leverage our purchase and search history and combine that with the appropriate profile dimensions to come up with the right personalized product recommendations that also take into account what other similar users have purchased in the past or have searched uh, for in the past. Similarly, Netflix is leveraging our movie watching history and the ratings that we've provided for movies, as well as other Netflix subscribers' preferences towards particular movies that we may not have seen to uh, provide a personalized movie recommendation. Stitch Fix has a different business model, but the ideas are similar uh, in that it provides personalized style recommendations, uh, but in this case, a personal stylist actually handpicks five pieces of clothing items, um, and the users or the customers of Stitch Fix uh, provide feedback on those items. Uh, essentially, they can choose to keep some of the items and return others, and the personal stylist learns from that feedback loop uh, and essentially improves the recommendations over time. For those of you who are familiar with uh, Viva Suggestions, the idea is very similar to mark as complete, in which case I keep the items, versus dismiss, in which case I return the items. And the process learns from that, and the recommendations improve over time. And finally, eHarmony.com or Match.com are based on last week's news, uh, uh, Facebook uh, providing matchmaking services, right? effectively leveraging very rich profile information and potentially historical uh, dating information to come up with a recommendation for a couple um, uh, for a next best date. Right? It's an interesting business question because if the next best date recommendation is indeed the best possible date for uh, that couple, it may end up uh, with a long-term relationship which may turn into a marriage as well, in which case technically the couple are no longer going to be using the services of the matchmaking site. Well, while our digital world is getting deeply personal, of course, the healthcare providers are also demanding a level of service that's associated with this level of customization and personalization. They want us to know about their preferences and they want that to be timely and relevant for them. However, if we actually take a look at what pharma is doing today, uh, we observe that there are significant opportunities for orchestrated customer engagement. What we're looking at here is a real uh, customer engagement journey for an HCP uh, over a period of 10 weeks of actual exposures to a number of different channels, from reps to emails to remote sales to other channels. The boxes are the touch points that the manufacturer has had with the HCP, and in columns you see the weeks. So we start looking at um, the engagement here Closely, we observe large gaps in promotional activity leading to potentially lower share of mind or share of voice for the customer. If we actually look at the email channel, we observe that the emails are sent to everyone in the target universe at the same time with the same theme, same content, or same subject line. We also observe that there are overlapping office visits and remote sales calls with duplicative messaging. In this case, they both focused on the same topic, but they could have focused on different topics as well, the coordination and harmonization that needs to be there wasn't actually there. If we actually look at the situation uh, that the target customers for this particular organization was in, um, we actually realized that 70% of the digital exposures did not match the customer's channel and content preferences, and more than half of the HCPs actually received suboptimal sequences, so a series of touch points from the manufacturer that led to suboptimal outcomes. The key to address this problem is to really focus on aligning the engagement with the brand strategy and powering this personalized customer journey idea with analytics, AI, and machine learning. In this illustrative example, Dr. Sharma, who is a skeptical champion who happens to have high Salesforce affinity and high affinity towards digital channels and also high business potential, uh, needs to go through um, a personalized journey in June through August, summer months, 
uh, to focus on the benefits of early treatment. The journey starts with an email that focuses on uh, the benefits of early treatment, which leads to the website, uh, which serves unbranded early treatment um, driver content. Um, and the face-to-face -face channel, in this case, the sales representative, is informed um, it, of the customer's engagement via the third-party um, content or the website. And the rep follows up with an email that focuses on the patient video series, um, and the customer watches the video, and they have some questions on dosing, which the inside sales representative addresses. The journey evolves in September through November to focus on clinical results um, and the patient, uh, and the inside sales representative follows up um, with an invitation via email uh, to a medical conference, and the journey continues that way. So you can um, see that the, it, the journey itself is very personalized, and depending on how the customers choose to engage or not engage with particular channels, they can follow a completely different journey, and we need to know how to harmonize across channels and how to adapt our messaging to different behavior choices that the customer goes through as they go through their, their journey. The aim is to provide the appropriate tools and processes such that we can treat every customer differently to drive engagement to demonstrably improve sales. The key is the orchestration. And the idea of orchestration consists of four important key pillars. Personalization allows improvement of engagement and brand recall by essentially picking the appropriate channel and content combinations that the customer has preference towards or has affinity towards. The harmonization creates a consistent brand engagement by arranging the touch points in the sequence and intensity that optimizes the experience. The journey needs to be able to adapt to contextual response as well as any sort of contextual factors that define the customer's behavior. So we need to be prepared to change every few moves and provide the appropriate messaging based on how the customer reacted to previous touch points and how they changed their, their prescribing behavior. And finally, if the deployment channel itself is the field force, we need to enable the representatives um, such that they know why a particular action is being suggested. So we need to provide them with the appropriate rationale that drives adoption of the field force. And that essentially leads to a, a better customer experience and rep experience. Um, so the content and the context are humanized, so it resonates with the field force when a recommendation is provided to the field force. Some organizations have already made progress in, uh, um, in this personalized journey design, and they established the tighter linkage between sales and marketing channels, and that's already leading to positive outcomes, either via pilots or some uh, national scale implementations. The impact is observed across multiple uh, fronts. Um, a critical one is at the customer level and um, around uh, prescribing behavior and dollar impact. Some implementations have seen uh, as high as 7% new to brand patient uplift, uh, 2 to 4% top line NRX sales uplift, or 15 to 25% impactable sales uplift. Uh, the orchestration and tighter linkage between sales and marketing also leads to improved marketing channel performance. Uh, we've seen 20% better open rates for home office driven emails and 25% higher attendance in webinars. And finally, it also leads to improved rep performance. We've seen 15% better call plan adherence and 20% better rep triggered email open rates. Our personalized next best action solution is the orchestration engine. The engine incorporates machine learning and expert systems or domain expertise by capturing the appropriate brand strategy, budget and operational constraints. It's an artificial intelligence enabled engine that provides recommendations to third-party channels as well as the field force. It evaluates the history, the relevant history of the customer from both a touch point perspective, interactions and engagements with uh, uh, the manufacturer, uh, marketing and sales channels, as well as the behavior, um, the prescribing behavior of the customer to identify the optimal next contact, which captures the right customer, the right channel, the right content, as well as the appropriate timing or cadence for that particular touch point. In many cases, the next 
best touch point could be a personal visit from a customer facing um, representative, uh, in which case the engine provides the specific insights and rationale for why that action is being suggested. I uh, could capture themes such as competitive threat to managed care or um, a Congress booth visit, for instance. The engine incorporates continuous learning and feedback both from the HCPs as well as the rep representatives. And the deployment platforms are campaign automation platforms such as Salesforce Marketing Cloud or Adobe Marketing Cloud uh, in terms of the third-party marketing actions or uh, field suggestions uh, enabled by uh, Viva CRM. The orchestration engine essentially needs to leverage a range of AI approaches that will blend deep domain expertise and machine learning techniques. So there's a wide spectrum from left to right um, that captures different levels of sophistication of domain expertise and online automated machine learning. So on the left-hand side, we have the expert systems or domain expertise um, and data science-driven suggestions and next best actions. These inform the appropriate rules under which the actions are being recommended, and data science helps determine the thresholds uh, above or below which we trigger certain actions. The transparency is high. We can explain why a particular action is being recommended. The personalization is medium to high. There are still some segment level inputs that go into the equation, in which case the personalization wouldn't be very, very high. It would be specific to the segment itself, and the automation needs to be high so that we can provide these on a regular basis. Offline machine learning and domain expertise driven uh, suggestions and next best actions uh, use knowledge extracted from uh, data using machine learning al algorithms that may be offline. For instance, a predictive algorithm that determines when a patient, a new patient, might visit a particular office falls in this domain. Uh, and these can be codified uh, into triggers and rules. The transparency can be medium to high. In some cases, the predictive modeling can use machine learning techniques that might be difficult to explain, for instance, to the field representative. Uh, the reason I'm pro proposing a particular action is because we believe, or we have strong enough evidence to believe, that a particular patient is going to visit this customer. Uh, the personalization will be high because the algorithms are largely run at the customer level, and the automation can be medium to high depending on the integration of the offline machine learning with uh, the online uh, engine and deployment platforms. And finally, the online and automated machine learning identifies rules that are modified on the fly as new data on customer behavior as well as rep uh, preferences and behavior is captured. Now, true machine learning algorithms constantly generate next best actions. In many cases, the actions essentially optimize a particular uh, objective variable uh, which could be sales, it could be customer engagement or experience, it could be a rep, rep feedback, so different levels um, uh, uh, or different variables can be incorporated into um, the objective uh, for, the obje uh, for the optimization exercise. But the transparency might become lower in some of these cases because technically uh, the next best action is being recommended because it is um, the revenue maximizing next best action but we don't really know exactly why it's being recommended, besides the fact that we, we believe, based on the history, they will generate higher uh, returns. Uh, we may not be able to link it back to certain managed care dynamics or certain uh, HCP behavior uh, dynamics and so on. Uh, it may simply be recommended because it actually uh, gen uh, is believed to generate better outcomes based on mathematical um, algorithms. Uh, the personalization will be very high because it incorporates um, many profile dimensions that the customer um, has, as well as uh, their individual behaviors and rep preferences around that particular customer. And the automation needs to be very high as well to be able to incorporate this many calculations uh, and this, this, this many dimensions into the whole optimization exercise that needs to be deployed through third-party marketing channels as well as the field force. Majority of the programs uh, that we worked on with um, uh, client organizations are a blend of uh, these different art, um, these different approaches. So the very first one on the page, um, the archetype one, essentially uses more of the domain expertise and data science driven suggestions and next best actions and less of the offline machine learning and online machine learning driven approaches. Uh, the, the archetype two, on the other hand, um, is 
leveraging heavily online machine learning and then to a smaller extent domain expertise and offline machine learning um, algorithms. AI and machine learning can power suggestions across many different scenarios. One idea could be to identify the best driver of performance given the history and context that the customer is in. In this example, Dr. Kent has engaged with a ser series of uh, touch points uh, and based on the, those, the, the recent engagement history with Dr. Kent and what has historically worked best for HCPs like Dr. Kent, uh, the next best step is to discuss products, our products' clinical superiority in a speaker program. And the action that's recommended is to reinforce the clinical superiority uh, using patient profile in the next interaction and consider inviting Dr. Kent to a speaker event focused on new trial results. Another scenario could enable course correction in real time. Dr. Lee has had a significant change in market share compared to other similar ACPs in his cohort. The action that's recommended is to schedule a follow-up visit to understand why um, Dr. Kent's behavior has shifted. And another scenario could be the prediction of new patient opportunities early on. Dr. Foster conducted two genetic test procedures, which are precursors of a particular down downstream diagnosis and Dr. Foster has high affinity towards efficacy messages. So the recommended action is to visit Dr. Foster to discuss patient options for patients who would be potentially eligible if the diagnosis comes through, and quote recent efficacy-related articles in discussion of product uh, patient profiles for mild to severe patients uh, for Dr. Foster. We leverage a range um, of advanced data science algorithms to identify and cluster similar sequences to identify and assess performance. Uh, the components of this include high ROI sequences. So we'll look at uh, ta tactic sequences over an extended period of time to determine the right series of touch points or sequence of touch points that will generate the highest return or hi highest um, uh, impact on the HCPs. We incorporate the individual affinities towards channels as well as content could be safety, tolerability, efficacy, access, injection, infusion, focus, and so on, and we choose among a feasible set of channels and content for the right customer at the right time. The entire HCP engagement history is incorporated into the optimization algorithm and the sequencing algorithm uh, to come up with the appropriate next best action for that particular HCP with the appropriate content and timing. So this recommended next best action, if it's uh, a marketing next best action is automated through a marketing automation platform such as Adobe or Salesforce.com or is deployed through uh, Viva CRM through Viva Suggestions. This undoubtedly will lead to a paradigm shift in the future and it will blur the line between strategic planning, tactical planning, and execution. The current planning happens oftentimes once or up to four times a year, quarterly planning. It's generally done at the segment level. Um, Pharma organizations have a reasonable understanding of the segment, so most of the planning is done at the segment level as well. Many times it's manually triggered and directed. So the, the planning process starts at a particular point in time and ends at a particular point in time, and then there are downstream implications and deployment that, needs to, that need to change uh, based on the direction uh, provided from uh, the planning. But the process is initiated manually, and oftentimes the deployment is even done manually. The rep channel continues to be a very heavy focus. Um, it's the highest impact driver in most scenarios, uh, but it also is treated and assessed in a silo in general uh, outside of um, the realm of other non-personal marketing channels. What the future will bring um, is going to be close to real-time dynamic optimization. The assessment is going to be individualized or customized and personalized accordingly as opposed to being at the segment level. It will be automated and enabled by artificial intelligence as opposed to being triggered with an FTE-based model manually. It will need to incorporate all channels in an integrated fashion to come up with the appropriate direction using surround sound that will deliver the highest impact in a harmonized way that will adapt to changing customer uh, context as well as behaviors. In order to facilitate the orchestration program, we've established some guiding principles to drive effective change towards adoption. This has four critical components. The first one is the end-to-end -end design of the change management program. 
We need a structured approach to design strategies and tactics that will drive the appropriate emotional and beha behavioral change with different stakeholder groups. The end vision needs to be shared, but the change needs to be shrunk as well. So we create the right path towards improvement over time in a sustainable fashion. The content needs to be tailored to different stakeholder groups, from IT to sales operations to Salesforce to brand and marketing teams um, and leadership. The change approach and content over the change continue uh, needs to be appropriately configured for the different groups. The program needs to be aligned to the adult learning theory, where 70% of the learning happens on the job or via experience, 20% of the learning happens via coaching or exposure, um, and only 10% of the learning happens via standard traditional training or workshops. So the whole learning and development program needs to be designed around um, uh, the adult learning theory, and it needs to be motivational, exercise-rich, and targeted. And finally, we need to be able to enable a proper dialogue. Two-way communication is really critical. So we need to continuously listen for feedback and refine the approach based on the feedback and be transparent in sharing successes as well as failures. We've established tailored content to support uh, organizational evo evolution and change management and orchestration implementation that we continue to leverage across uh, pharma organizations and enhance at every implementation. I'll focus on two uh, pharma case studies. So the first one will um, focus on next best action for a large global biopharma company for a blockbuster specialty brand. The intent is to coordinate across many channels uh, and sequence the touch points appropriately to drive HCP level personalization based on both predicted as well as actual channel and content preferences or affinity. The intent is to generate a fully automated machine learning based next best actions. We've gone through um, the, the process in uh, 2017 and the outcomes are very promising even in the earlier months uh, of the launch uh, of the program. We've, we've observed a 16% increase in reach towards target physicians, a 20% increase in engagement with home office emails as well as remote sales representative calls. Now 33% of the touch points are interspersed between personal to non-personal uh, interactions. Previously, that used to be 9% um, of touch points that were interspersed between the two types of um, high-level channels. And there's a $60 million potential revenue upside uh, with expansion to other channels, which is happening as we speak. So the results are very promising with the implementation of fully machine learning driven and fully automated um, next best action approach. The second case will focus on orchestration engine with a field um, engagement. This is also for a large global biopharma company with, for multiple brands and multiple indications with 700 representatives, uh, 20 plus data sources, and a large number of suggestion themes that span a broad uh, spectrum. The outcomes are also very promising. This program has been in place for about two years at this point, 13% improved call plan adherence, 16% increased customer engagement, and a 15 to 25 percent impactable sales uplift. I want to leave you with uh, some perspective on where the industry stands today. About 15 percent of pharma companies have started piloting integration of sales and marketing to deliver um, the personalized customer experience that we talked about. The industry has changed significantly since 2012. Back in 2012, about two-thirds of the pharma organizations, the large pharma organizations, were in that tactic marketing stage where they were just getting started, understanding the value of proper customer-centric marketing and realizing that uh, they need to build the data, technology, and analytics foundation to get there a few years down, down the line. So that change really started happening, and it picked up in the last couple of years. If we fast forward to 2018, now only a quarter of the pharma organizations are in that tactic marketing just getting started stage. A third of the organizations have moved to integrated trigger-based marketing where uh, customer-centric marketing is happening for their priority brands, but not for their smaller brands. Uh, and the value that they're able to drive is uh, tailoring marketing content and channels to the customer preference for those priority brands. About a quarter of the companies have been able to move to what we call the integrated journey marketing, with sales channel being informed. They've been able to expand customer-centric marketing to cover more brands and link to the sales representatives and other customer-facing personnel as well. 
So as a result, they're able to provide consistent customer experience across channels. And finally, about 15% of the companies are either piloting or they've nationally rolled out an orchestrated sales and marketing approach that captures sales and marketing um, via uh, next best actions and suggestions in an integrated manner. And they're able to provide a significantly more personalized customer experience. So where does your, where does your organization stand today? Um, and do you have a roadmap in place? Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at omar.hanser at zs.com. Thank you again. Thank you.